So, hey, you want some drama? We'll give you some drama. Sit back and enjoy tonight's episode, The Penis Fly Trap. Before Tiger King, Murder, Mayhem, and Madness will be ranked as the number one most watched television show in the world with a 98% fresh review on Rotten Tomatoes. Joe Exotic, who claims to run the world's largest private zoo for tigers and produces incredible campaign videos. First thing is, I am not cutting my hair. I'm not changing the way I dress. I refuse to wear a suit. I am gay. I've had two boyfriends most of my life. I am broke as sh I have a judgment against me from some down there in Florida. Before Joe Exotic would become immortalized as a meme, a costume, a face filter, and would have his face printed on t-shirts. What'd you say? Carol's a bitch. Well, I'll tell you that. Before Joe Exotic would be arrested and convicted of two counts of murder for hire, eight violations of the Lacey Act, and nine of the Endangered Species Act, and would be sentenced to 22 years in federal prison. Just within the last hour, Joe Exotic called us. I spoke to him on the phone asking him, are these allegations true? I put five tigers to sleep because they were in pain. They had toenails coming out of their ankles. They had no teeth. They had exposed root canals. Joe Exotic has become such a big deal while people are already placing bets on who should play him in his own Hollywood movie. Now popular picks, they include Danny McBride, David Spade, Billy Bob Thornton, and both Dax Shepard and Edward Norton, well they've already thrown their hats into the ring. Now if you were to ask me, I think Michael Keaton, he'd be perfect. Mwah. Since our last video on Joe Exotic, well the fandom, the intrigue, and the memes, they've only gotten more and more out of control. So I decided to dig a whole bunch deeper so I could find out more. Now I got some juicy info like what he was like in high school, he's got an ex-girlfriend named Kim, also tons of footage that was just too wild to be featured in the Netflix docuseries. Let's roll a clip. I'm a pretty woman lover, I'm an ugly woman's dream. What the hell are you two doing? Also, what the hell was this? Fits all sizes, okay? Yeah, that fits. What's going on guys? It's your boy Michael McCrudden back at it again with another Before They Are Famous video. Now recent drops on this channel, they include a Before They Are Famous on Carol Baskin. Also where are they now on his ex-husband John Finlay. Now this show, it works off suggestions from you guys, so you need to let me know who's next in the comments down below. We also post videos daily, 7 p.m. Eastern, so be sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. All right, now let's get into this video. Hey, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! We're located here in Woodywood, Oklahoma, right off of I-35 and exit 64, in between Oklahoma City and Dallas, Texas. So be sure and stop by and visit me and Sarge and the other animals here at the GW Exotic Animal Park. And we'll see you then. Joe Exotic was born Joseph Shrivogel on March 5th, 1962 in rural Kansas. Now as the story goes, Joe, he was born into a wealthy farming family with four siblings. He has two brothers and two sisters with him dab in the middle. Now there were no handouts. His parents, they weren't affectionate and they never told him they loved him. Now when he was five years old, he says he was repeatedly raped by an older boy. This actually happened in his own home, and he vividly recalls how a drawer in a bathroom could be propped to keep the door shut. Damn. Obviously tormented as a young boy, well, Joe, he chose to give his love to animals. Now he became the president of his local 4-H chapter where he raised show pigeons. He also took in ground squirrels and raccoons and he kept them in cages. Now he brought home baby antelopes, porcupines, and raccoons. Also snakes, which was much to the dismay of his mother. Now he dreamt of one day becoming a veterinarian. Now his mother's name is Shirley, his father Francie, and he's a Korean war vet. Now the family, they moved from Kansas when Joe was around 14 to Wyoming. From there, they moved to Pilot Point, Texas, north of Dallas, where they lived in an eight bedroom house on a large ranch. Now Joe, he wasn't close with three of his siblings, but extremely close with one brother named Gerald. Now Joe and Gerald, they would pass the time watching nature shows on TV. They both had a deep love for animals. Now in high school, Joe, he got bullied by the jocks because he preferred to hang around with the girls. Now in retaliation, he sprinkled roofing nails all over the school parking lot and he popped the tires of a hundred cars. From there on out, well the jocks, they never messed with him again. Now Joe, he graduated from high school in 1982, but unfortunately his photo, it doesn't exist in his yearbook. Now following school, he talked his way into becoming the police chief of a tiny crumbling Texas town known as Eastvale. Population just 503. There, he lived with a girlfriend by the name of Kim, but he also explored Dallas's gay nightlife. Welcome to the club, buddy. Let's get something straight. Bruh. 
Eventually, Joe, he was outed by one of his siblings to his father, and Joe, he had to shake his dad's hand and promise not to attend his funeral. Now, overcome with shame one night in 1985, Joe would later refer to this as the bad year. Well, that's when he attempted suicide by crashing his police cruiser into a concrete bridge embankment at high speed. Now, he says the result of this was a broken back. Thankfully, he didn't die. Now, he spent 57 days in a hospital, and then he moved down to West Palm Beach, Florida to participate in an experimental saltwater rehabilitation program. Some people say it was kind of wishy-washy. I guess he just wanted to go down to Florida. You know what I mean? Now, Joe's neighbor down there, a man by the name of Tim, well, he happened to be the manager of a pet store and Tim's friend. Well, he worked at a drive through zoo. In one of those places where customers, they could ride around in a safari car and look out the windows at lions and other animals who were roaming free. Now, Tim's friend, he would sometimes bring home baby lions and let Joe play with them. Now, Joe, he liked to say that he was broken at the time and these little critters, well, they helped put him back together. Now, after a couple of years, Joe, he returned to Texas and he got a job as a security guard at a gay cowboy bar. This was called the Roundup Saloon. Now, there he met his first husband, Brian Ryan, who was 19 years old at the time. They moved into a trailer together in Arlington, Texas, where they shared a bed with a pack of poodles. Around this time, they were newlyweds in love and they would pass their time snorting meth and going to gay bars. Now, eventually the two, they wed at the Roundup Saloon, but due to the times, this was the late 80s, well, it wasn't legally binding. Anyway, I decided to look up this bar and it appears that it's still a good time for the fellas. Now, down the street from the trailer where Joe and Brian lived was a pet store called Pet Safari. Now, Joe, he got a job there and later he and his brother, Gerald Wayne, well, they decided to purchase it. Now, to attract a gay clientele, well, Joe, he hung rainbows and he sold rainbow dog t-shirts. Now, for the first few years, they sold reptiles, birds, and small fish. And when they could afford to expand, they would buy bigger cages for small exotic pets. This included three banded armadillos and four-eyed opossumuses. Opossums? Opossums, sorry. Now, all was going well, but then in October of 1997, well, disaster struck. Now, Gerald, he was hit by a drunk driver outside of Dallas, and he died within a week. Joe's parents won a sizable settlement from the trucking company responsible for his death. I believe it was $140,000. Now, Gerald had always dreamt of visiting Africa where he could see lions roam in the wild. So with the money, Joe, he purchased an old horse ranch in Wynwood, Oklahoma, where he began to build a refuge for exotic rescued animals. Now, he named it after his brother, the Gerald Wayne Exotic Animal Memorial Park. Joe poured cement for sidewalks and he built a row of nine cages. Now, there was already a little ranch house on the property that Joe and his husband, they moved into. Now, over the years, he had discovered that a shocking number of exotic animals, well, they were living in backyards and basements all over the country. Now, many of which they had grown too large or too dangerous for their owners. People began dropping off exotic animals that they no longer wanted. Now, the first two pets at the zoo were Gerald's deer and buffalo. Then came a mountain lion, then a bear. In 2000, Joe, he got a call telling him that someone had abandoned two tigers in a backyard and he named these Tickles and Tess. From there on out, well, Joe, he was raising cubs and the guy was in business. Cause cubs, they, they mean a lot of money. Within two years, well, Joe, he had already amassed more than a dozen tigers and he persuaded the local Walmart to donate its expired meat, which he would then feed to the cats as well as his crew and probably himself. Obama, Congress, this is a challenge for you to come up with a solution so America can eat without wasting all this and worrying about people getting sued. If I can figure this out from the middle of the country in Oklahoma, I'm sure sitting in your leather chairs up in Congress, you can come up with an answer to why America can eat. Despite the free food, well, these big cats, they were an expensive bunch to feed and money, it was always an issue. Now we would borrow from his parents time and time again until he came up with a few new ways to monetize his zoo. This included cub petting, but there was also the traveling magic show. Well, my real name is Joe Schraubel. I go by Joe Exotic because nobody ever knows how to say Schraubel. <laughs> oh, and, and, this, and now I have to fix your microphone. <laughs> Ricky, this Ricky. And Ricky, right? this is little Ricky. Hi, Ricky. Uh, little Ricky hey, is, is Hi, the one Ricky. who actually does the show. Hi. Ricky and I were making Rick, friends. Ricky, yes. loves, Hello. Yeah, mm -hmm. Ricky loves me. I'm the one guy. Hi, Ricky. Now, unfortunately, bringing cubs out into the public, well, things, they didn't always go as planned. This employee told us he got scratched up by one of these older tigers just the day before. It was just a total, total mess. He also opened up a pizzeria and a safari-themed bar. You can sit down on the patio right next to real-life tigers, and you can have some of the best homemade pizza that I make from scratch. Now when he said scratch, what he really means is scraps. 
Really, when you stop to think about it for real, how many animals just in our truck died for no reason? And this is only one city, one week. Ugh. Now, he also sold merchandise with his face on it. This included condoms, lube, and t-shirts. And visitors at the zoo, they often got sprayed with lion urine, or they would get bombed by ape feces. Now, afterwards, they could proudly buy a t-shirt from the gift shop that read, I got peed on by a lion. Okay, cool, you're in for a whole new treat today. Anybody not got a sense of humor? Time to get the hell out. We're gonna put baby little ligers in your lap. You're gonna get on the ground and love on baby tigers, baby tigers. We're gonna wrap you up in snakes. You're gonna French kiss camels. You're gonna hold alligators. You're gonna play with wolves, skunks, all kinds of stuff today. All right, so for the next two hours, you're in my world. Now later on came the TV studio, so let's take a look back at the very first YouTube video that Joe Exotic has posted. Welcome to the GW Exotic Animal Park. I'm Joe Exotic and this is Sarge. And we'd like to welcome you to one of the world's largest accredited rescue facilities for exotic animals. Now that video right there, it's nearly a decade old and it still holds up. I think he did a good job. Of course, a little later would come the music videos, like this one. I'm a pretty woman lover, I'm an ugly woman's dream. Baby, you're lucky, have a man like me, yeah. Looking over Joe's YouTube channel now, which is nearly a decade old, well, there was only one or two videos that would go viral and these were of the animals. They were never of Joe. And this was despite him producing legitimate content seemingly daily. He just never really figured out YouTube. He was posting good content, he just didn't know how to work the system. Anyway, that's all changed now because since this Netflix series has exploded, well, Joe, he's picked up 80,000 new YouTube subscribers. His channel is also getting over a million views a day. I suppose better late than never. Now, if you wanna know more about Joe's story, we're talking his ex-husbands, we're talking his fight with Carol Baskins, we're talking about his arrest. Well, all of that is in his Where Are They Now video, so be sure to check that out. My name's Mike McCredden, and as for the rest of the story, well, you can find it in his Where Are They Now video. That's all I got for you guys. If you're new to this channel, be sure to subscribe, tell your friends all about us. We post videos every day at 7 p.m. See you guys in another video.